Take seven, money shaming time. Well, we just came out of dry January and here we are in Canada. We're in the, in the late to end stages of what I call finance February. And this is the time of the year, especially here in Canada, where the uh, financial industry basically pulls a full core press on us uh, to convince us to park their money, park our money, park our savings in their particular bank because they will have uh, ideas and solutions and products that will lead us to financial bliss. Now, to be fair, you know, a lot of this kind of this uh, marketing element uh, is is kind of government driven because there are policies and places where there are deadlines here in Canada for uh, or incentives that basically uh, for Canadians to make extra contributions by by the end of uh, February uh, into their retirement savings plans. And so the financial industry has taken that deadline kind of concept and made a put an element of urgency on it. That's a whole other discussion we can have right now. Now, the money shaming thing kind of goes in two phases. The first phase, which we're seeing quite a bit right now, is the survey part. This is a part where data is kind of thrown in our faces to kind of tell us that we're doing, we're not doing some things right with respect to our, how we're saving, or more importantly, that we're not saving enough. Case in point, TD Bank came out with a survey uh, this month that said Canadians need on average $1.7 million in savings in order to retire comfortably. $1.7 million. It's a heck of a lot of money. You know, we're all trying to figure out how to, you know, deal with the price of eggs and apparently onions has become a luxury item. Now we're going to like layer this this number on top of us that we can need to be uh, parking away. Okay, well, if that's not enough, Bloomberg did a survey, I believe it's called the MLIV Pulse Survey, and literally doubled down on it, saying, you know, we need probably more, almost close to 5 million. And then, heck, they even identified a critical mass of people that identified they needed about $20 million in savings. Whoa, so that's one side of it. First part, just make us feel that we're not doing enough. And that's part of the money shaming thing. Second part to reinforce this concept is the concept of commercials. Um, this year, definitely, I noticed commercial time uh, this month happened to be the Super Bowl was on. And uh, I noticed a lot of the commercials were skewing a lot. You didn't see hardly see anything uh, crypto related. But um, from an uh, investing side, we saw two kind of things. One was gambling. Because sports gambling is quite proficient, pro, pro, you know, all over the place right now. Uh, heavy skew on, on sports gambling. But then there was a heavy skew, at least here in Canada, I noticed that there was a lot more uh, investing commercials. And it's interesting because they're both offering the same incentives. They basically offer you an app, which allows you to get, essentially gamify the process, make the process easier for you so you can accumulate that $1.7 million. But then they offer you actually financial incentives. They say, hey, sign up for a, sign up for our app and we'll give you a, you know $100 in free credits. It was interesting that a sports gambling website was saying the same thing as a bank. <laughs> and so what are they trying to do, especially the investment side? I think this year, I think they're still trying to capture that FOMO vibe of, two, of 2021, of the time in the early days of the pandemic, we we're all locked down, we had nothing better to do. Oh, let's just, you know, day trade stocks. So that's the other side of it. So a lot of incentives, a lot of, uh, you know, and gamifying and making making the whole concept uh, fun and exciting. Um, that's the second thing in order to shame us into saving more and parking more money over there. So that's, that, you know, that's, that's what's out there. The reality, here's the reality. Investing is not about setting up piggy banks. It's not about downloading apps. It's not about putting bets on short-term bets. Investing at the end of the day is about making decisions, educated decisions. So instead of focusing on what kind of app uh, investment company has or what kind of incentives they're giving you, it's really important as investors that we're developing our competencies. And these are elements that the financial industry really has no desire to want to do. What are we talking about investment competencies? Well, obviously got to be educated. Understanding not about going out and getting an MBA in finance or going to an Ivy League school and studying finance. It's about learning basic principles of how wealth is created in our society. Understanding the mechanics around and also understanding the behavioral elements that factor into and influence how we make decisions. 
Second piece, engagement. Practice, practice, practice. You can't get good at something if you don't do enough of it. So practice, engaging in the process of making decisions. And finally, if you're doing if you're doing the education thing and you're practicing, the third competency that ultimately gets developed is empowerment, building confidence and making decisions and being confident enough, even when things are not going right, that you have a background and an understanding, okay, I know I got to chill and I got a playbook and I just got to keep staying to sticking to my plan, sticking to my plan, sticking to my investment path. Unfortunately, you're not going to get any of these kind of uh, insights from, from financial companies, investment companies. The last thing they want to see are more educated, engaged, and confident customers. They would prefer uneducated, apathetic, and intimidated customers. And so right now, the big thing we can do as well as these, as these companies are kind of laying that guilt trip on, on us, money shaming us, we got to just keep plugging through and just do the best that you can. But if you're really serious, focus on the competencies. Don't focus on the gimmicks. That's all I got for you. If you're interested in more takes, you can find me on my website, sageinvestors.ca. You can follow me on Twitter. And I'm also on LinkedIn. We got a webpage out there, Sage Investors, if you want more information about uh, my coaching services and my investing courses that I teach. That's all I got for you today. Take it easy. Bye.